So welcome to the event, guys. We've got a very fun, very interesting and collaborative opportunity and experience you're going to have today. So I hope you guys are really excited. We've got Les Brown coming to you today to teach you guys on the concept of motivation, on legacy, and maybe you didn't know, but Les Brown is a former foster kid. And yes, I've got my foster kids highlighted Sure, You'll learn more about that. So we're going to bring in Les Brown. Uh, no further ado, you guys don't need to be hearing me talk all day. So uh, let's bring him in and let's have some fun. So where is Mr. Les? Oh, there he is. We're going to go and make him a speaker. So Les Brown will pop in any minute now. And once he does, uh, we're going to go over a really fun interview that we're going to have with him. Les Brown, welcome to the party. Thank you. It's a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege to be here with you. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with us. I'm so, so excited to have you. Uh, before we get started, let me go over kind of how we're going to use this 30 minute interview with you. Uh, we have a Q&A section right here at the top right. So everyone watching right now, use that Q&A area to ask your questions to Les. Each of you watching can vote on those questions to see which ones do we want to get answered first. So while Les is sharing some ideas and I'm asking some questions, feel free to pop in some of those in the Q&A area. We're going to go in that area to pick your questions. Uh, and then one thing I do want to cover is if you guys want to stay connected with Les Brown, we've got a really fun opportunity for you guys to actually collaborate with the one and only Les Brown. And the way you'll do that, if you guys got that little text message number uh, at the beginning, once you connect it, right? You text in the word connected to 714-369-8528. That same phone number, text in the word less 2020. I'll put it in the chat box here as well for you guys to get that. But that'll get you guys connected on this info. So Les, thanks for joining me. Uh, really excited for you to have us here. And um, first things first is I want to ask you a question that we can talk directly to our From Orphan to CEO students, which is the whole reason why we're doing this event. You know, my focus is to bring awareness to foster kids and what we're trying to do with the foster care system. I'm wearing a shirt today. It's got a very crazy statistic you may not know. Foster kids literally get a trash bag in 10 minutes to pack up their lives when they gotta go into the foster care system. Maybe their parents just died or got arrested or something happened where family can't take them in. Now they gotta go into a stranger's home. Now, you and me both come from the foster care system. We've been able to come out on the other end of that with mentorship, entrepreneurship, faith, and really having a, a grounded foundation to what we need to be doing. What are some of the things that I would say, some of these lost kids that don't have what we've been able to create so far, what are the things they need to know about building their own dream, going after their legacy, and how to really pursue what they're trying to do in this life? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this subject and for the work that you're doing in this area that's needed. And the statistics in this area for foster kids are just quite dismal, and they don't have to be. But because of individuals like yourself who have concern and compassion, for foster kids that we can reduce the number of foster kids that end up going down the wrong path, ending up in prison and living a destructive life. Uh, I was very fortunate. My mother, uh, she took us in when we were six weeks of age. I have a twin brother. And then she took in five other foster kids. So she's a single mother, third grade education, never had any children. And she took on the responsibility of raising seven foster kids. And so one of the first things that I encourage the foster kids to do and anyone is find a hero that I feel that represents who you wanna be in the future. And in that, my particular case, I took from my mother, I'm here because of two women. One gave me life, the other one gave me love. God took me out of my biological mother's womb and put me in the heart of my foster mother. And so Mrs. Mamie Brown, she had a third grade education, but she had a passion for kids. And her passion caused her to bring us into her home. 
she wanted to share her life with someone. And so I admired, there was, there was three main things I learned from her. Number one, I learned the power. Second, Dara, I need you to video, please. Say it again. Uh, Dara needs to either refresh. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Uh, number one, <laughs> no I, I learned the power of unconditional love. I was a problem child. My brother, Wesley, my twin brother, he never got in any trouble. I used to say, Wesley, you need to do something. They think that I'm crazy. And he said, you are. <laughs> because I was put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade. And I was labeled educable, mentally retarded. And I stayed in that category all through high school. I passed. I, I failed again in the eighth grade. And so, but I had this high school teacher who had the kind of energy and your personality. Mr. Leroy Washington, I'll never forget, when I went in his class looking for another student, and he said, young man, I want you to go in front of the class, I want you to read something and work this problem out. And I said, I can't do that, sir. And he said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, look at me. I said, yes, sir. Do what I'm asking you to do anyhow. I said, I can't, sir. And the other students started laughing, saying, he's DT. He's got a twin brother, Wesley. Wesley is smart but he's DT and he's asked, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. And everybody started laughing. And I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk, man, and he looked at me, he said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. And so what he did was he interrupted the story that I believed about myself. My brother, he did very well academically. I, I struggled. And it helped me to begin to redefine myself when he spoke those words to me. He, it changed my self-explanatory style, as, as psychologists would say. And, and we do that through the program that you're now doing. And he put me on the path of self of, of working to begin to look for ways in which I can improve my life. And this was my junior year in high school and I stayed on this path all up to this point at 75. You know, I, I, I woke up one morning, here I am, February 17th and I'm 75. Man, man, Manny, I used to think people in their 40s were old, but now I'm 75. I believe I was a, a servant at the Lord's Supper. <laughs> so, so it's very important as a young person to find someone that that represent the qualities that you would like to embody. And my mother's faith, her drive, and her determination, I got that from her. Mr. Washington, uh, he was a great communicator. He was a speech and drama teacher. And he said, once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. And I learned that from him. And then he introduced me to self-development materials. And I started listening to self-development materials. And I would like to, one of the goals I have that's on my bucket list is to work with those foster kids that are given 10 minutes to pack their clothes and, and go to another family or 10 minutes to be packed up and be emancipated. Uh, because I would like to take them through a training a year before they are emancipated so that they don't end up living a destructive life, so they can learn the tools that they need to learn that will allow them to navigate their lives. They have greatness in them. They have the ability to do more than what they have achieved thus far. And many of the families that take them in, some people do it for love and compassion and a, a willingness to help. And then some people do it for the check. And fortunately, I was very fortunate. I was not sent around to different families, that we were only there with Mrs. Mamie Brown. That's that's my mother. That's the only mother that I know. She's my mother and my father. Father's Day came around, we gave her a Father's Day card. And so I was very fortunate not to be bounced around. There are a lot of foster kids that are not so fortunate. And I feel that the work that you've been doing and pioneering in, that we need to have more programs of this nature. Yes, big time. And, you know, I think that's the biggest difference. And that's what I found as well is, you know, for myself, my sister was also in foster care with me and she is 11 months older than me. She did not 
have a mentor. She didn't get that hero. She didn't have entrepreneurship as a vehicle to build her own dream. And faith was very limited for her. And so I looked at what kind of happened with me and that kind of those three things really helped me get to where I am today. I have a question from Damien. He's actually one of our From Orphan to CEO students, former foster kid. He had to go through some terrible, terrible chaos to get where he's at and still has to go through a lot of digging deep to go over some of the trauma. He has a question. He says, best advice for former foster kid trying to become an entrepreneur. The best advice is, number one, train your mind. It is very important, and it's easier now to become successful, I believe, because there are tools available, like the computer, like your phone, that weren't available when I was a kid. The 2007 Time magazine said the computer is the person of the year. Why? Because for the first time in the history of the world that everyday people have access to information. So you want to access information that will bolster your faith that will build mental resilience because you're going to go through some tough times when you're emancipated and, and when you're bouncing around from home, one home to the other. Uh, and you have goals and dreams that you want to achieve as, as an entrepreneur. Next thing that is very important, that you want to develop your communication skills, presentation power, because the ability to negotiate, the ability to make a point, the ability to inspire yourself and to inspire others, your ability to communicate will have long reaching sustainable success for you because people will be able to relate to you. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. So your ability to sell people on your specialized knowledge or skill is dependent upon how well you express yourself. The third thing that's very important, and I call it OQP, only quality people. You have to surround yourself with collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. People that can help you grow mentally and emotionally and spiritually. People that will hold you accountable to a higher standard. People that will keep you on the path. People that are dreamers just like you. And, and they will rub off on you. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you end up a loser. So working on your mind to develop mental resilience, upgrading your skills in whatever area that you decide that you want to go in and monetizing your passion and creating collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. I think that those are some of the strategies that's necessary for you to accelerate your success. Oh, huge. It's, I would say that that OPQ, only quality people, is one of the biggest things that's been that difference maker for me is you can surround yourself for years with the wrong people, the wrong mindsets, the wrong ideas, the wrong processes, and you just keep going down an empty hole. So thank you for that, Les. Uh, Lisa Bubari, she has a question. One of our Network of Influence members says, you are the master in storytelling. How do we change our story to storytelling? I think it's a really good question. Thank you. Well, you know, I wish I had an opportunity to hear her story because I can give her some coaching on how to tell her story. But in the absence of that, here's what I suggest, Lisa. If you want to tell your story to make a difference, to make impact, or to transform people's lives, I think there, there are some things that's important, and I, I, will, I will send to you, Manny, seven principles of storytelling that you can send to Lisa and everybody else that's listening. But let me share with you three things. Number one, what gave me the success that I have received and recognition and to become a national and, and global speaker is one that when I came into the industry, it was promoted by information from the book Think and Grow Rich, people providing information from that. That was seen as the Bible of the self-development industry and to a very large extent it still does now. What I brought in storytelling, I talk about my mother and the impact that she had on me and Mr. Leroy Washington. If information could change people, everybody would be skinny, rich, and happy. And so stories have a human face. And so when I brought in the, the, the 
practical things that I learned from my mother and from Mr. Washington and other examples that created an experience for the audience. So storytelling with subjects of people that, that have inspired you and, and telling it strategically to create an experience. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. And the next thing is that the the speaking industry where I am and been able to earn millions of dollars and, and speak around the world has been governed by the Dale Carnegie course, which is a very good course. Tell them what you're going to tell them and then tell them and, and tell them what you told them. Well, what I train speakers, and that's what I'm doing now, at this stage of my life at 75, I'm not interested in traveling anymore. And, and I'm training speakers. And, and so what I, I teach my speakers that gave me a competitive advantage and put my success on steroids, most speakers have a memorized script and they come in and tell them what they're going to tell them and then tell them and then tell them what they told them. My mentor, Mike Williams, he wrote a book called The Road to Your Best Self. The Road to Your Best Self. I encourage you to get it. I, I, I wrote the forward for that. And Mike said, Brownie? I said, yes. Never let what you want to say get in the way of what your audience wants to hear. And so what I did when I came into the industry, I provided a needs assessment to find out what was it that the clients who requested that I speak for them, what were they looking for? What were the takeaways for the people in the audience that they wanted them to have? What was it they wanted me to drive home? What was the third party validation that I was going to provide that they could not do? And so by getting that information, asking those questions and incorporating that in the presentation, along with the stories, along with quotes to drive the point home deeper and with humor and passion and special moments and creating bridges in the presentation to bring the audience in so they take ownership and transforming the people in the audience individually and collectively, that gave me a greater impact. And so when you incorporate the things that I just shared with you, it will allow you to, to put your success in this area on steroids. And I encourage you to find someone who's speaking on the level that you'd like to speak on. That's what I did when I hired Mike Williams to be my strategist. I, I admired how he spoke. I wanted to be as good as him. As, and he told me I could be better and he was right, but I didn't believe it at the time. And, and so I invested in myself and we've been fortunate enough to been together for 51 years. And so you want to find someone who's speaking on the level that you want to speak on, someone that you identify with, that speak from their heart, and that can coach you because the reason that a coach is very important, you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. Next question. Ooh, can't read the label when you're locked in the box. Write that down, my friends. That was great. Uh, one thing I do want to have, if you can do for me, my friend, uh, Madeline Nicely is on right now. She is 12 today. Today is her birthday. Can you give her a shout out, please, or a happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy oh, yeah. birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Natalie. Happy birthday to you and many more. <laughs> and more. Wow, thank you for that. You got your own personal serenade there, Madeline. And congratulations. All right, so <laughs> next question we have, Les. You are just killing them over here. <laughs> Uh, Annie Evans says, very simply, how can I become a hero? You can become a hero by making a decision that some place in this world where we are now, that you are going to contribute to make the world a better place. It might be feeding the hungry. It might be assisting senior citizens. It might be helping young people that are in foster care transition out of there when they are liberated and, and help them not to become incarcerated. It, it might be helping and assisting people like myself, who is a 27 year 
a cancer conqueror. Find something that you want to do. Horace Mann said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. So I'm, yeah. I'm so glad that you asked that question because I believe that all of us were, were chosen to do something, to bring something here that was not here before we came, to, to live a life that will outlive us. And the book of life says, the least that you do unto these, my brethren, you do it also unto me. And so you're having that kind of compassion and, and wanting to take your life in the direction of serving people is major now more than ever before. I love it. And that's really what it's about. You know, for me, I've looked at my business and this is something you all could be doing is create a cause based business model. Look at a company like Tom's Shoes. The, every time you buy a pair of shoes, they can give a pair of shoes away. And this is what I've done to create my From Orphan to CEO program. I created a mastermind group, Network of Influence. I utilize this mastermind group to fund everything we've done with the From Orphan to CEO project. And now my students can come to me and not have to pay me a dime to learn how to build their own dream. I mean, people like Damien, he's been able to come through our program and we're helping him build his own dream. And it's just pouring in resources to these kids. Today, we've got over 2000 scholarships available because of entrepreneurs coming together to collaborate and creating this way to do it. Right. We all have solutions we can bring to the marketplace. Some of you just don't realize how effective you can do when you give it away for free. Right. And that's the thing that I think would really be valuable to businesses to understand is that it's entrepreneurs that bring the solutions to the world. And if we just come together and collaborate, we can we can solve the world's problems. One of the questions that we get, uh, Coach Sagasta, how do you stay motivated when the motivation stops? <laughs> that's a very good question. And we have hits. We have our moments in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, believe it or not, when I went through an experience recently where right now I'm under the auspices of Cancer Centers of America, and they, they told me, Mr. Brown, are you aware for some time now you've been fourth stage cancer? And I said, yes. And cancer's metastasized to seven areas of your body. I said, yes. And I smiled, and he asked, how can you smile in the face of what I just said? I said, because cancer is one thing, but seven is my lucky number. <laughs> I said, I was born February the 17th. I'm one of seven children. Cancer cannot defeat me. Seven is my lucky number. That means that that cancer is getting the hell beat out of it. Now, what I was doing in my own head is that you find a way to be in, in optimistic and expect things to get better for you in spite of the conditions, in spite of the situation, judge not according to appearances, but righteous judgment. You surround yourself with people that can speak into your mind and to your heart. Mike Williams, who's been my mentor, he said to me, Brownie, you got this. And, and so you have to, I believe, have someone in your life that believe in you until your belief kicks in. And he convinced me that I've got this and it's been 27 years. I'm kicking Kansas butt so badly, it has dropped by 90% in my neighborhood. <laughs> so I, I call it this. Yeah. I call this being too blessed to be stressed. And uh, yeah. my for my first mentor, who is also the pastor that married me and my wife, uh, that's what he would tell me every day. I'm too blessed to be stressed. No matter what I was going through, there's always something you can look at to stay positive, to keep yourself in the right mindset. And, you know, there's always things negative you can look at. I mean, you can look at all the bad things going on in the world and just cry yourself to sleep. Or you can look at the positive uh, possibilities that are endless in the abundance that we have here that is is – God given and it's just abundant in, in creation. So yeah. I love it. You know, the way we think is just the way we can bring our own reality. Yes, but there's something else I do. I have things to bolster my faith. And 
my confidence. I listen to motivational messages on a regular basis. I encourage all of them to watch Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome to over 80,000 people. I was frightened out of my mind, but I got through it. Uh, it's Possible is another one that people love and, and they see that on YouTube. Getting Unstuck is another one that's very popular. I watch other people as well, motivational messengers that give me hope that I can handle this. I'm Chris who beat cancer. I watch a variety of things. And so I encourage you to watch positive things on YouTube. And, and then in addition to that, I encourage you to play inspirational music, uh, things that lift your spirit. I, I love gospel music, and so I, I listen every day and meditate. I meditate three times a day. I am at peace. I give thanks that I'm healed. I am at peace. When any negative, stressful thoughts try and come into my mind, we cannot control the thoughts that come in our mind, but we can control the thoughts that we dwell on. And I dwell on words of peace, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I deal with pain daily, but that's the affirmation that I say to myself, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. This is not going to stop me from living a full life and, and living a, life that's an example rather than a warning yes I, I love it so thank you for that Les. i mean you're giving us some golden nuggets here hope you guys are definitely taking notes you're lucky we're recording this so we're going to put this on demand one of the things that i want to show people real quick is uh, a way that i've been able to take that kind of concept because i've heard you multiple times talk about surround yourself with the right information go watch videos on youtube that inspire you and so what I ended up doing a couple of years ago, Les, is I created a whole school of business called Manifestation School of Business. And people can go in there and watch YouTube videos that are all inspiration, faith-based, entrepreneur-based, mentorship-based, and we weed out all those boring cat videos. So if you want to watch videos, and we actually reward our students in Manny Bucks to go watch videos on YouTube, including interviews like this with Les Brown, uh, that's where you want to be. So just in case you guys want to know, Manifestation School of Business, definitely jump on that. Um, another question that came in from Tina Torres, one of our other Network of Influence members. What were the daily habits you do and still do to create the success that you have today? Good question. Every morning when I wake up, I say all things work together for God, for those who love God. All things work together for good, for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. And I said, I give thanks and I'm here. So I write down seven things that I'm grateful for, my gratitude list. And then I listen to some motivational messages. Now, whatever you focus on for the next 20 minutes, when you wake up in the morning, will affect the spirit of your day. Do not turn on the television. Do not look at the computer. Don't, don't read your emails. Just, just program yourself for what it is you want to get out of the day. And then I review my agenda. The average person want to get through the day. You want to get out of the day. So the night before, I write down seven things that I'm going to do that's important, that, that creates momentum and moving in the direction of the goals and dreams that I set for myself. Robert Shuler said, by the yard it's hard, but inch by inch, anything is a cinch. So I break it down into manageable chunks. And so I review those things. I pray, I meditate, I hold a vision of the goal that I'm working on. I see it accomplished. The Book of Life says, I will give you all your eyes can see. And I give thanks. And then I set out, Lord, more of thee, less of me. I'm going to change some lives today. <laughs> That's a ritual that I have created for myself, and I encourage you to do the same for yourself. I love that. So we got a couple more minutes left, and I want to kind of pivot back into the foster care. Um, 
Damien has another question. Advice for former foster kids who are already out of the foster care system, but still struggling to stay on track. You know, maybe they're still suffering with some of the habits and traumas they've dealt with, and they can't really get out of that mindset just yet. What are some of the things that you would suggest for them? Well, first of all, they can get out of the mindset. That's number one. Uh, we, we have the ability to do that. A, a dog can never be anything but a dog. An alligator can never be anything but an alligator. A rat can be anything but a rat. But human beings, we can be anything that we so desire in spite of what we have gone through. And so in life, you can become better or you can become bitter. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. So I want those who, who are in, in a challenging situation and have had some experiences, I do understand. There's some things that you go through, it's going to take a minute and you can't, it, it will, you can't do it by yourself. So I want them to email me at less at lessbrown.com and I'm going to send them some motivation materials but in, and, and I encourage them to find everything that I have on YouTube and saturate their minds with it and email me and I will carve out time to talk to them at least once a week to get some, give them some coaching absolutely free because I'm here because uh, I've been help. My foster mother, she loved us. She gave us love. She helped us. Mr. Leroy Washington. I was never mainstream like my twin brother. That's called DT the dumb twin. But he interrupted that conversation and he inspired me to believe in myself. He helped me, he had long conversations with me. And I hope to be a Mr. Washington to somebody who's listening now. lesbrown 77 at gmail.com. That's my email. You are definitely someone special. And I think with everything that you do, Les, and everything that you've done for our students, our program, our organization, just your life as an example that these kids can look at. I think this is the biggest takeaway that we have is that for me, it's been, always been around capture the leaders, capture the market. We don't know how much your story inspired me less. I mean, back in 2008, I was meeting my first mentor and he tells me, Manny, you got to listen to this guy, Les Brown. You know, he was an orphan, just like he was put into foster care. And he's gone through all of this stuff. He ended up, you know, creating all of this legacy. And, you know, I was looking at the CEO of my company, who I was initially looking at as the example, right? That I'm like, oh, I want to have the nice car and the big house and all the, you know, all the freedom in a sense. And I'm sitting there working seven to seven every day, Monday through Saturday, getting Sunday off to hang out with family. and still being stuck and he tells me and i'm looking at the ceo who doesn't appeal to me at all he's completely the opposite of me so i'm thinking that's not me i'm not that can't be me and then my mentor says watch this video on youtube and you know what video he shows me he shows me the video of you in the georgia dome in front of eighty thousand people and i'm like this guy's in front of 80 and he's got a story like mine you at that point made it possible. Within a short amount of time from there, within three years, I started my first company. I took the leap because now it was possible. The fear out the window. I looked at you as an example continuously. In 2012, I get a phone call from Bernie Dorman saying, hey, Manny, you should come to this event called CEO Space. It's only $7,500. And I was like, you're crazy. No way, man. I started my business for less than that. And he goes, well, you know, I we'll hope to see you there. We've got Les Brown keynoting. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Because I already had my bucket list made. And yeah. Les Brown, breaking, you know, meeting Les Brown, shaking his hand was at the top of that bucket list. And he goes, Les Brown's going to be there. I'm like, wait, 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 Les Brown. Like, you got to be hungry, Les Brown? And he goes, yeah, that Les Brown. And I was like, okay, hold on. I've got to make that somehow, some way. And literally, I had about 500 bucks in my bank account at that time. But somehow, some way, within two weeks, I got that 7,500 I needed to get to that event. 
I got to meet you. I got to shake your hand. I was front row while you were telling everybody they got to be hungry. I'm getting spit on by Les Brown. I was great, man. I was having a blast. And then I got to meet John Leslie that night, right? We were back at your hotel room. I got to meet Sherry Tree talking about these bank cards that I still have today. Yeah. And I meet John Leslie. He had just found out he's about to be a father. Yeah. Right? I'm five days between him and, and our age, and I'm already a father. We spend all night hanging out, talking, train, train stories, stayed connected. Till a couple of years later, I get a call from John Leslie say, Hey, Manny, what are you doing today? My dad's in LA and he wants to meet you. I'm like, What? Ah, I'm clearing my schedule. I'll be over there. And that's when we did our very first you know, selfie video where you're like, Manny, what do I do now? Right. That was yeah. so much. Shortly after that, I helped you build out the little app project we did together. Then you came in and spoke at our CERVEX event in 2018. I mean, every time you have been, you know, just there and you've been available and you've been accessible and, and you've been there to help and serve. And I just can't thank you enough. And I wanted to kind of share that story with my audience to kind of give them you know, the story behind this is it not just, you know, I called up your team and, you know, we got a random deal put together. No, like he is here to serve people. He is here to give back and look what he's doing. He's opening up his time for my students. And that that is the power behind finding people, your heroes that you can follow and live by and go into. And my hero has always been Jesus as my first hero. And then looking to where I can see the business heroes the lifestyle heroes, my mindset heroes, my growing business heroes, right? And then you have become a massive hero in my life and many others. And I wanted to thank you for that as you shared your time with us today. Well, thank you so much for who you are and how you're showing up in life. The world is a better place because of the commitment that you have made to serve the least of these a brethren. Thank you and God bless the day you were born. Same way, brother, thank you to you as well so uh if you guys have any more questions please get them in the q a i'll get those over to Les. hopefully we can get some answers on some of those questions because there's a lot in there that we weren't able to get to uh but i did want to be respectful of your time today and um and if you guys have any questions as well we have a really special project that me and les are going to be working on in helping him go digital yes we want to get Les to be able to relax at home with his grandkids and just spend the time just enjoying life. But help a brother out. Help a brother out. Yes. <laughs> he's hungry. He wants to train. He wants to help. He wants to serve. And he's got some pretty unique ways to do that. So if any one of you have always wondered what it would be like to be coached by the one and only Les Brown, what would that be like? I don't know. Well, you can have a chance to find out, guys. So if you want to learn, all you got to do is just text the word LESS2020, so L-E-S-2020, to my cell phone number. That's 714-369-8528. You're going to get a text response back saying, hey, you've got your in. We've got your info here. And uh, we're going to send that directly to LESS and his team. He's got a very special introduction that he's doing that is all digital. So very, very fun where you can interact real time with Les, be part of his community and get taught by the one and only motivational legend himself. So definitely text in. We'll get you guys the info on that. Uh, any last words you want to say for our audience, Les? I want, I completed my book. You've got to be hungry and oh, nice. go to Amazon and put in the search engine, your search. Yeah. You've got to be hungry. My new book, the greatest within to win. And I don't care if you get it. Yes, I want them to help me to get it to the New York Times bestseller list, okay? And spread the word. You've got to be hungry, okay? That's it. I'll be hungry. All right, I'm going to get that out to my, my network as well. So I'll, I'll text it in to everybody that sends that in. So thanks for your time, Les. I really appreciate you being here and sharing your wisdom. Uh, and uh, if you guys have any questions, you've got Les's email. So reach out to him, get connected. And then uh, let's stay connected. So you, all, you guys have a great day and stay blessed. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, folks. So with Les, uh, let's see here. Let me go and bring you off there, my friend. Okay. 
So that is the first segment, guys. Now, just an FYI, this event is not over. Right now, we're going to open up for networking. Yes, table-to-table -table networking. Les may still be here, so you might get to go ask him some questions. Uh, and at the end of the day, we've got a bunch of tables all around. Go meet our network of influence members. I'm going to come back to give you guys some highlights to what each of these members do in just a few minutes. But go ahead and open up networking, have some fun, and uh, stay connected. We'll see you guys very shortly.